Bonjour à tous. I want to begin this morning by reflecting on the reports and videos that have continued to surface in the last few days of violence against black Canadians and Indigenous people. And I want to talk about what this means for our path forward as a country. On Friday, I went to a rally on Parliament Hill to show my support and listen to what community leaders and black Canadians are calling for. I hear you and I see you. As you call out systemic discrimination, racism, and unconscious bias, as you call for action, and as you call for it now. Nos communautés subissent les inégalités et le racisme en ce moment, incluant dans le contexte de la pandémie. Il suffit de regarder une carte des cas de COVID-19 à Toronto et à Montréal pour constater que les Canadiens noirs sont plus durement touchés par la COVID-19. Je suis là pour écouter les revendications des Canadiens noirs. Je vous entends dénoncer la discrimination systémique, le racisme, les préjugés inconscients qui persistent chez nous, et je suis prêt à passer à l'action. The reality is that many people in this country simply do not feel protected by the police. In fact, they're afraid of them. That alone would be bad enough. But systemic discrimination and racism in Canada goes much further than just policing. It's about poverty and mental health. It's about the fact that people are all too often treated like criminals instead of receiving the support that they need. We, as governments, need to work together. We, as leaders, need to recognize that these problems are tied to inequ economic inequality and the racialization of poverty. And we need bold measures to address this. Our government promised to address systemic racism and injustice. We knew that this work had to be informed by the lived experiences of racialized communities and Indigenous peoples. So we listened, and we worked together to change things. We invested in mental health resources and youth programs for black Canadians. We worked to close the gaps in services for Indigenous communities. We funded Statistics Canada so they could create a gender, diversity and inclusion statistic hub. And this work culminated in the release of Canada's anti-racism strategy for 2019-2022 and the creation of an anti-racism secretariat. Just last fall, we appointed a minister to focus specifically on diversity and inclusion. Together, we have made progress. Progress that has meant support for groups like the Black Health Alliance and new schools for Indigenous kids. But I hear you when you say that it isn't enough. I hear you when you say that it doesn't solve systemic racism. And I agree. With the many disturbing reports of violence against black Canadians and Indigenous people, we know that we need to do much more. And we need to do it now. I had a discussion with Cabinet on Friday that will continue later today. I also spoke with Commissioner Lucky of the RCMP this morning. The Commissioner assured me that she will use all available tools to take quick, solid action. On our call, one of the things we discussed was the adoption of body cameras. I'm committing to raising this with the provinces this week so we can move forward as quickly as possible. Minister Blair has also reaffirmed to me his commitment to improving Indigenous policing. And later today, I have a stock take on reconciliation to discuss our work with Indigenous communities. I am committing to you that this work will continue to accelerate the pace of change, because you deserve real commitments as quickly as possible that addresses the root causes of these problems. Les choses doivent changer, mais réparer des siècles d'injustice, d'exclusion et de violence, ça se fait pas du jour au lendemain. Il faut travailler ensemble, il faut travailler fort. Aujourd'hui, je m'engage à continuer à mener la charge. Et notre gouvernement va travailler aussi fort et aussi vite que possible pour bâtir un pays plus juste et meilleur avec vous. There's no doubt that the last few months have been harder than anyone could have expected. This pandemic has meant different challenges for everyone. But 
No matter who you are and no matter what you're dealing with, a little bit of help can make all the difference. Maybe your employer has been able to keep you on the payroll because of the wage subsidy, a program that's supporting two and a half million jobs. Perhaps you got some extra help through the Canada Child Benefit, or you'll receive more money with the top up to your old age security. Or you might even be one of the 500,000 young people who has accessed the student benefit, helping you pay for next year's tuition. Au cours des derniers mois, on a travaillé fort pour aider les gens à traverser cette crise. Et les programmes qu'on a lancés et les investissements qu'on a faits font une vraie différence. Je pense par exemple à une histoire qu'Anthony Housefather m'a racontée sur l'entreprise montréalaise Franklin Empire dans son comté qui fabrique des produits électriques. Cette entreprise familiale existe depuis quatre générations et emploie plus de 500 personnes au Québec et en Ontario. La business allait bien, mais quand la pandémie est arrivée, ils ont dû fermer leurs ateliers et leurs chaînes de montage. Ils voulaient garder leurs employés, mais ils ne pouvaient pas y arriver seuls. Et c'est là que la subvention salariale d'urgence est entrée en jeu. Ils ont pu réembaucher tous leurs employés et, avec notre soutien, leur verser leur plein salaire. On parle de 500 personnes et familles qui reçoivent leur chèque de paye comme d'habitude, malgré la pandémie. Ce n'est qu'un exemple, mais ça démontre pourquoi les programmes comme la subvention salariale d'urgence sont si importants. Mais on sait qu'il reste encore du travail à faire. On Friday, I announced that the federal government would contribute $14 billion towards a safe restart agreement with the provinces and territories for the things that all Canadians need as we get our country back up and running. Right now, we're working with the premiers on what this restart could look like in the coming months. And as we do that, we're staying focused on people's new realities. If you work in a hospital or in a business that's reopening, you'll need PPE to stay safe. If you're back on the job, you might need transit, childcare, or the option to take time off if you're ill. If you're a senior or at, at higher risk from COVID-19, you may need some extra support. These are the things that Canadians are thinking about, so it's what we're thinking about, too. Les provinces et les territoires font tous face à des réalités différentes en ce moment, et on doit en tenir compte lorsqu'on envisage les prochaines étapes. Mais peu importe où vous vivez, on travaille avec votre premier ministre pour conclure un accord sur la relance qui va nous permettre d'assurer ensemble votre santé et votre sécurité. En plus de collaborer sur cet accord, les premiers ministres et moi avons aussi discuté des Canadiens qui sont séparés de leurs proches à cause de la fermeture des frontières. On veut évidemment que les familles soient ensemble, mais notre priorité demeure la sécurité des Canadiens. On va donc instaurer une exemption limitée qui va permettre aux membres de la famille immédiate des citoyens ou des résidents permanents à entrer au Canada, principalement des conjoints, des enfants et les parents d'enfants mineurs. Mais je veux être clair. Toute personne qui entre au pays va devoir s'isoler complètement pendant 14 jours. Je sais que le ministre Mendicino aura plus, plus long à dire là-dessus plus tard aujourd'hui. This is an incredibly difficult time to be apart from a spouse, a child, or mom and dad. We hear that. That's why we're bringing in a limited exemption to allow immediate family members of citizens or permanent residents to come to Canada. I want to be clear, though. Anyone entering the country will be required to quarantine for 14 days. And if you don't follow these rules, you could face serious penalties. I know that Minister Mendicino will have more to say about all of this later today. Je sais qu'après ce printemps très mouvementé, bien des gens espèrent que l'été sera plus facile. Les choses commencent à s'améliorer pour tout le monde, mais on sait qu'il reste encore beaucoup de travail à faire. Et les Canadiens peuvent compter sur notre appui dans les mois et les semaines à venir. Merci.